Hello and welcome to the full build video of my RBS3. RBS3 is my third rolling ball sculpture that I designed and made in 2021 using 1.1mm copper wire and it took nine whole months of my hobby time. What you're watching in this video is the whole build process from start to finish. That's nine months of me planning, designing, creating, soldering, testing, cleaning and perfecting this craft. It's very hard and I really, really enjoy it. The first job I did was to collect all the materials together for the project. I actually do quite a lot of planning on these projects before I start filming anything. I also use CAD, I use SketchUp to design the woodwork and the electrics and where I'm going to put everything. Here you can see the position of the motors and the switches and all the hidden wires are going to go. Then I mark up the pockets onto the wood and start the woodworking process. Now I'm not very good at woodwork, I must admit, but all of the woodwork I do is going to be concealed by a cover plate, so it doesn't really matter that much. There I am, showing off my handiwork. I was quite pleased with it. Then it's time for the electrical. This is the power supply input, and I'm also going to do the switch plate uh, and the speed controller and hide all that on the inside. There's my electronics diagram. It's basically just switches, and I understand it. And one input and several outputs. I do use coloured wires and I strip it all back and I use heat shrink where I can and it looks complicated but it's not really. That's a PWM speed controller that I've bought and I took it apart to fit it in and then put it in. A couple of cable ties and then cover it all up. All the details on everything I do is in the um, playlist that I made and so if you go to the electronic one which I think is episode three then you'll find everything that I did there. Uh, should you wish to know in more detail. Now it's time to mount the uh, motor on a copper plate and I really love working with this stuff. It's nice to machine, there's a nice little drill press and it all polishes up nicely. I use a lot of M3 brass nuts and bolts. M3 is one of my favourite threads, I must admit. And there's a mono leg that I made which I used as a motor mount. There's some terrible plastic cogs that I started with and they didn't last long but uh, for a few weeks I had to kind of persevere with them, they were the best I had. Then I covered up the baseboard using cardboard and tape. This is to protect it during the build process because I was afraid of dropping lots of hot solder onto the baseboard and marking it. And you can see here I'm trying to get the cogs to turn on the axle by having all these kind of external bits of copper around everywhere. It's a pretty lovely job to be honest. There's the actual mount and um, various bits and bobs being soldered all over the place before kind of being cut away again. <laughs> and here comes the chain. After a while I moved on to build the uh, main frame. This is a great big golden arch that I made out of 3 16 copper brake pipe. And here I am marking holes for drilling uprights into the base um, in order to support the track as it comes back down. At this point I began to realise that the plastic gears were just not really going to be any good. So here's the final look at them and then I took them all off, took everything apart and bought a whole load of Meccano sprockets and chain. And here you see a nice metal sprocket being added to the top. And this is good stuff, I like it, I love Meccano. And there's the gears that I used. I use the gears because that means I can run the motor at a slightly slower pace which means it's quieter and slower but I still get nice speed to lift the balls up. I don't like the motor being too noisy. Then I'm using the top cog to set the bottom cog position uh, using the chain as a plumb pod to make sure everything's nice and in line. And then I set one set of lifting fingers on. This is quite a hard thing to solder. The, the chain didn't really like being soldered to it. And it's a really tiny scale. The chain is only three millimetres apart and the fingers are only six millimetres apart. But I got it to work. I got it to lift one ball 
repetitively up to the top. So now it's finally time to start doing the fun stuff, and this is the downhill tracks. The first thing to make was the, um, the track at the bottom that loads the balls onto the chain system. Look at that, I'm so delighted that it works. And now at the top is the unloading system for the balls to be removed from the chain and then starting to use gravity they roll down the copper hence the name copper gravity and this is the exact point where i realized i'd made my biggest construction mistake i knew the ball lift wasn't very good but i was impatient to get on so i left the problem i ignored it and left it till later and that cost me a lot of time and effort on the whole project but here I am having a nice time making the downhill track sections because this is the fun part. Here's a lovely thing, it's a serpentine. Credit here to David Morrell who came up with the name and came up with the idea. And I just love these. It makes the balls go zigzag, they slow down, it looks like they're going to fall off. And it's made by two rows of semicircles which are then offset and joined together to create that zigzag motion. It's also at this point I started to film everything quite close up. So from now on you can see quite a lot of the joint detail. And some of them look awful because I am filming in close up. But remember this is quite small stuff that you're seeing. The two rows of semicircles are then angled with respect to each other because that keeps the balls in position as, it, as they wobble down towards you. I love this. You can see I look pleased. Now it's time to make my track switches. These are also fun elements to make. I made flip-flop switches and these direct the balls either to the left or to the right. And by having two switches on the way down, I end up with three different routes down. Tiny little copper tubes are used as axles and spaces. At this stage I was soldering with quite a lot of flux and then I was forced to spend quite a lot of time cleaning up. These days I don't use flux and it's a lot cleaner to do my solder joints. The second switch is slightly lower than the first and it's positioned underneath the first switch. And I used a little mini copper bending jig and some cutting tools to form the tubes into um, nice little brackets to mount everything on. Designing as I go, let's call it. Now both switches are in place, I can join them up. Sometimes access to solder is pretty tight. This is how I support the track. I use two mil wire and I bend them into 90 degree angles and they go onto the bottom of the track spaces. Now we're watching footage from July 2021, so we are four months into the build. I am quite slow, I'm, I do admit. This is only a part-time hobby. I do it in the evenings and weekends, basically. I also 
filming everything slows everything down. It at least doubles the time. This is a great opportunity for me to explain my choice of soldering iron, which is a resistance solder iron. This uses negative clamp and a positive carbon anvil, and high amps pass between them, which locally heats the wire. Uh, it's quite different to using a traditional heat iron, and I absolutely love it. It's taken quite a while to get good at it, and I've got a foot switch now, which I didn't have in the beginning, so that improves the amount of um, sparking that goes on, it reduces it right down. There's a nice track support going in. What a lovely joint. There, yeah, solid. Happy with that. Here I am trying to bend copper in midair. These days I tend to do it on the bench and then fit the copper track as a separate element. I also use clamps to hold the track spaces in place these days and that saves me pre-tinning the track and having to try to use pliers to hold the spaces. When I do it that way it can shake and wobble quite a bit. But again, I've got a bit better at this hobby as I've gone on through the year. Five years now I've been doing this and as I look back at these videos I can see just how much I've improved in the last 10 months alone. If you're having a go at this project, then I wish you well. It's good fun, but it's not easy. This is the super fast downhill section, which is caused by the sudden drop. I do like it when the balls go either fast or slow and switch rapidly between the two. And having the very steep downhill section is um, one, of the, one of the ways of speeding up the ball really quickly. Lots of testing and adjusting and cleaning before finally deciding exactly where to set the track and using a, um, a support piece of copper to set it in place. Lovely. So at the bottom of the great big drop, you need a huge kind of turn back curve. This is where the ball is going at its fastest and is most likely to fall off. So it's important to play with the camber. This is the amount of lean there is on the track to stop the balls um, flying off the outside. A little bit of mending. And we're back after the summer break now, um, during which I'd refurbished the workshop. Uh, so there's nice shiny plywood everywhere. And I've got um, yeah, some nice new tools in order to help me with this hobby. This piece of track leads to the three ball gatherer. This is a nice element. Here's a little mini mistake. The balls can't actually plop over the axle because it's kind of in the way. So I had to redo it and there's the there's the fix. Again I use little tubes to create the axles and stoppers. And this is supposed to tilt when the third ball arrives so a little bit of adjustment is needed. And then it works. Here you can see me adding uh, loads of clamps to hold the spaces in place. I'm always thinking, always learning, always improving and always looking to get better solder joints. And over the last year I've, I've really come on a lot in this hobby. Here's a nice thing, it's a bumpy track. This is at the bottom of the three ball gatherer bit, so when the three balls get released they go all the way down this bumpy track. A bit like a roller coaster. See how easy this is now? We've 
holding the uh, track spacer with a clamp. Boom, done. Bumpity bumpity bump. This is the unloader. I added a bit of copper at the top and um, this is now making the loader, which is at the uh, bottom of the sculpture, that is uh, to hold the balls in exactly the right place so that the lifting fingers can lift them up. Lots of adjustment needed here. Now, because there were three different routes down, I got three different angles that the balls will arrive at at the bottom. So the job of this piece here is to gather those three incoming tracks together and then send the balls out through a final track into the ball loader. Again, I love working with the copper plate, but this is an 80 watt iron that I'm using to do this work because it's needed. And I really don't like that iron. Um, it's not my favorite tool at all. Here you can see it all coming together with balls being loaded to test the angle and a few more spaces on the bottom to keep the tracks at the right spacing. Very happy with this design, it looks good and it works really well as well. Eventually the time came to address the elephant in the room and to take off the chain and add the remaining two sets of fingers. Trying to get all three the same was really difficult, they're very horrible to solder on and trying to get them the same size, shape, position and angle was really time consuming. We're now into October 2021 and I'm six months into the project. I decided it was time to remove all the cardboard and the tape to reveal the bottom because um, getting in there and doing that now is going to become more and more difficult. It's quite a thing of beauty now, it's getting to the stage where I can see how it's going to look when it's finished. And I kept telling everyone, telling everyone it's nearly finished, it just needs finishing off, there's not long to go. Two spirals to build here, these are lovely elements to add. Uh, the first one is the vertical spiral. So you start off by making a uh, like a spring by winding the wire around uh, a form and then you set it in to the right distance using track spaces. After that I do the entry and exit tracks. A lot of the build process for me is getting in the zone. Once you're set up and know what you're doing and you've got the radio on and you, 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 you're on the flow, you just get on and solder. Getting into the rhythm really helps with repetitive tasks. Here's the ball entry trick. more track supports. The vertical spiral does wobble quite a bit when the balls go down as you can see here um, but that got a bit better when I um, added the lower track to, uh, to the spiral so it stopped vibrating later on. And here's the horizontal one. I love this. This ball receives uh, that this, this spiral receives the three balls at once at the bottom of the bumpy track and it's just glorious how they go around in a nice fast speed getting smaller and smaller. So I used a paper template to roughly get everything right and then I just added a whole series of spaces underneath at various points and did testing every now and again to make sure it was all working. Lots and lots and lots of cleaning. I use uh, 000 grade steel wool to keep everything nice and clean and then it was time to add the exit track to the underside of the spiral. Thinking, designing, cutting, bending, soldering, adding, cleaning, testing, such a lovely process.
rinse and repeat with track spaces. Nice. I loved building this. I wish I could build it all again, actually. And there's the entry. Final bits of track now at the bottom to join it all together. And this test shows that all of the downward tracks work absolutely perfectly. It's working, I'm happy, but notice that I'm not actually using the chamber. And that's because it wasn't really any good. So it was at this point in the project that I was forced to admit to myself and everyone <laughs> that the chain lift system just wasn't working well enough. It was jumping on the sprockets and basically unable to work reliably. I had not built in any adjustments to the system. So I removed the whole system and replaced it all with a helical spiral design, which is a much more reliable system. Here I am making the axle that holds the copper spiral in place. I'm on a roll now because I'm pretty confident this is going to work. I've made a couple of these in the past and uh, I did fancy doing something different on this model, but um, I knew it was going to be okay. Getting access was difficult because it was all an afterthought and I was having to compensate and compromise with the design and the way of mounting it. Um, and also trying to fiddle into the centre of the bottom of the model with all the other track being in the way. So I had to temporarily cut away a load of track and do this, so it was quite annoying. Really fiddly. And often I use a whole bunch of clamps, you can see that here, and sky hooks and everything I can find to hold things in place whilst I do all the work. But it worked. The helical spirals just work, they're lovely things. When the copper's too large for soldering, then I, I now switch to brazing, which makes it a lot easier. It can get a lot of heat in with a, with a flame. And at the top there, you can see I've built in some fine adjustment to set the spacing correctly between the balls and the vertical track. This is a motor mounting plate. So I'm using the same motor that I had before, but this time mounting it vertically and slightly towards the back of the sculpture. And I'm going to stick with the chain and sprockets to transfer the drive onto the axle. And again, I had to do that because there wasn't really room to mount the motor sub-flush of the woodwork because this is all being done as an afterthought uh, because uh, my, my plan A didn't work. Then I could switch the motor on. And thank goodness it worked. Not bad, actually, for plan B. Then I had to reconnect all the tracks that I'd cut off in order to... Um, in order to be able to get in there and do that. And finally now is the last length of track required at the top of the new lift to take the balls to the start of the serpentine section. So really I am now on the homeward straight, doing the work right at the beginning of the uh, sculpture. Once again you get into a rhythm, you put the music on, you repeat, and it doesn't feel repetitive, it feels great. Because every single joint you're doing, you're, you're moving forwards towards the end goal. And there it is, really finished. Just a final support or two and the whole project is complete and ready for the final sales video.
Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this whole process from start to finish. Please subscribe to my channel and like and share and comment on the video. I really enjoy the all the interaction that I get with you. I'll see you next time on the next video. Thanks. Goodbye.